You're watching another Nerd Stalker interview. Okay, hey, we're live. Welcome to another Nerd Stalker interview, and this is a interview for Nerd Stalker Kickstarter Unbox. So, good morning. This is Greg Gloria, aka Social Greg, on Twitter for the Nerd Stalker Media Network. Today, we uh, we'll be speaking with Chris DeCastro, who just got funded on Kickstarter for the game The Wizards of Trinity Bellwood. So, anyway, and we'll let Chris talk about that in a little bit. Uh, good morning, Chris, and welcome to Nerd Stalker Live from Toronto, Canada. Right. Good morning, Greg. Hey. hey good 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 uh, hey congratulations on funding uh you know if, uh, i guess it's a few weeks ago now and uh you know i'd like to go over some of the lessons learned uh from an indie game developer standpoint you, we don't get a lot of indie game developers on this channel so I, i'd like to hear your thoughts and uh we're, we're talking we're, offline about that all over the place now and uh and yeah um and doing kickstarters and yeah i'm really uh, I, I got to thank all the backers, of course, um, that backed the project. Like, thank you. Uh, we made it. And yeah, and I get to talk about a successful Kickstarter now. <laughs> so I should explain what the game is first. That the game, it's about, <laughs> it's about our local park in Toronto, um, Trinity Bellwoods, which is our hipster park. Uh, and you play as a can collector waiting for hipsters to finish their drinks. And you collect their cans and use that money to improve your home. Um, and that'll open up more people in the park. It'll follow the gentrification that's been going on in the city, as well as uh, the Asian immigrant story that's been going, that, that's a big part of Toronto, which we can, I can touch on a little bit later. But the important part of the, the Kickstarter was that um, to create all the people in the park and all the hipsters, um, I just had a bunch of friends who were like, hey, can it be in your game? And people, would, I tell them like, "Oh, I, oh, you should design a hipster around me or something." And I realize, like, you know, I, I also want to make a lot of characters, and that's really tough to do um, as a designer. I'm just like, okay, like, how many hipsters can I really like? How many character designs can I really make? And I realize, oh, there's something I can put together in there, and I was like, I could make that as the reward for the Kickstarter. Part of that would be then I could like base the designs on all the people that donated, then I could like actually have them in the game, which is something I'd love to do anyways, and try to like, like I could, I could just open up the gates and it would have been really bad. I would have like, all my friends just kind of going like, oh, why am I not in the game? I'm like, okay, all right. And it, it was actually a way to kind of just balance that design need, the kind of like getting people engaged in the game and kind of like, well, I can like, Truthfully, what I put for the rewards on the design of the characters is well below what it actually costs to design a character. But I really just wanted like that opportunity for people to be part of the game. And that's that, that is like that's and so that was like the core thing of like having doing a crowdfunding like campaign. As well as like I want to try to make the like have the game as a free download. So Oh, interesting. Like, so like have that as like because again, it's like I'm making a game based off of a real place and if somebody's in the park or just is talking to somebody about it, I just want them to download the game so they can actually experience it first. Well, you know, we met, met you at uh, Casual Connect, which is I think at least here in San Francisco, it's the second biggest uh, game dev conference. It, it's a little bit different actually. Um, than other ones that I've, I, you know, GDC is the biggest, at least the one around here, um, and arguably maybe the biggest in the world. But, um, you know, I, I think uh, it, it struck me that indie game developers are just like startups, as we talked about offline, right? So, yeah. and and this this whole crowdfunding thing is now becoming available. But, you know, I, I've also read a lot of things in, um, in press over the years about, um kind of the negative side of indie game developers. A lot of them start, um, I, I think there was some funny percentage, a majority percentage that said that, you know, even once they get funded, um, they fail to deliver, actually. Yeah. And, um, you know, that, that could be a lot of reasons. I'm, I'm sure it's not easy, you know, you know, I don't know if people really kind of realize, but I think doing a game is like a, a movie production, right? It's a lot more... It's a lot more than actually what you would ever get funded in. Um, so 
uh, the amount that I did get for the for the game isn't going to cover the actual production. And it was actually a really important thing that the Kickstarter that it that the Kickstarter the real purpose is to get people engaged with the game, like to get people like involved and especially with the with the the game I'm making is that it requires I really want that participation. I really want that like the 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 players to have an opportunity to be part of the game and to to engage with the project. Um, and yeah, it's it's not like you it's amazing how expensive it gets. Uh, oh, if you really want to like if you really want to like to pay a full rate for for development or anything yeah most and it's actually yeah it's a big deal that's going on with like kickstarter with like with crowdfunded uh games is that yeah that number that you see isn't the actual cost um but it is really about the like getting people excited getting getting people like getting people to to getting the temperature of just like is this a game that should be made and having that 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 funding in there to literally kickstart it to to literally just get it off the ground. Um, oh, yeah, fascinating. Yeah, oh. I, no, I, I've I've never heard it kind of put that way before. Now, now, you know, what, why did you choose Kickstarter? You know, there's other you know, Indiegogo is obviously another option. I mean, and you, um, know, you would think that's kind of more more the game dev style, right? Yeah. I, I, like I, I, and it's funny enough because I. Um, so I've been really lucky to have worked on a, um, quite a few crowdfunding um, campaigns, uh, a lot of in the tech sector, um, and Indiegogo. I've, I've worked with Indiegogo and on, on some stuff, and yeah, it was an, it was definitely an option. Um, I went with Kickstarter. Really, really, it was about name recognition. It was really it was really about when I say Kickstarter crowdfunding it was it was just that synonymous and um and also it was just it was available like uh they have a you know it's the 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 platforms are very comparable um there's not much of an advantage either way other than just like there was that kickstarter name and yeah so I, I figured like hey you know what might as well just go for that so it was no. really, it wasn't it wasn't it was really not that strategic or anything or like a feature set. I was just like, yeah. Um, and, and also like I knew, uh, I knew one of the, the kind of like the community managers like was like from another, another campaign um, and you knew about the project. So that, that helped as well. Although I had had the same thing in Indiegogo, but really, yeah, it was, it was really about just like that Kickstarter, like it's Kickstarter. So mm. you know, let's let's go into some of the Lovely. challenges you had. Of now, how long was this campaign uh, uh, for Kickstarter? Thirty-five days. Um, I made sure it ended uh, the week before Labor Day weekend, um, which I think is the same between the Canada and the U.S. So that's like the first week of first weekend of September. Just making sure that it didn't land right when everybody was going to their cottage, which I kind of missed, anyways. So it was, yeah, end of summer. Um, I started actually campaigning six weeks before the actual launch. Um, and this was another thing from experience of like doing other campaigns is that your launch is really the halfway mark. Like you need to, like that's the beginning of the marathon, but you need to train <laughs> like, right before you actually get to there. So it was six weeks of like, just going to like conventions, going to festivals, um, just telling my game, telling telling people around about my game, like contacting as as many people as possible, um, and just uh, and the first the first thing was about uh, I I got a Mailchimp account and I started like I had a I had a mailing list and the mailing list was kind of like the core thing um, where I put. Kind of anybody who was interested in the game, and it was it was like the six weeks was really about like okay, how many people can I tell about the game to get interested so that when I do launch, I get that thirty percent at least of my goal. Now this was all um, this was all bootstrap. This is all you doing this outreach. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I think. <laughs> 
um, at, at Casual Connect, well, I thought there was a PR person for you, but I, I wasn't oh, sure yeah. if that was just, you know, um, I don't exactly. know, if that, you know. That was uh, actually completely random. Of, uh, so it was actually my uh, longish kind of story, but my wife met um, Elizabeth Olson, who helped me with the kind of LA and game develop and the kind of game community reach. Um, and my wife randomly met her in LA at the airport <laughs> and was just like, uh, Elizabeth told like my, and my wife owns a tech company and they were just like, Oh, I'm in, I'm a game marketer. And my wife's like, well, my husband's making his first game and here's the idea. And Elizabeth really fell in love with the idea and like was like available to help. And so she, yeah, she got me, um, she got like, she put casual connect on her radar. Um, she like just, yeah, she did a bunch of like, just legwork of like putting people, like putting me in contact with like the, the kind of like the West coast game scene. Um, and that was really helpful and that was pure luck that, and I'm, I'm eternally grateful to her for her. And she's, yeah, she's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, we didn't even decide to interview you that day. Actually, it wasn't on our card. But, yeah. Uh, Elizabeth said, oh, I have another guy you need to talk to. And so, you know, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> I, I mean, um, you know, a lot of people on Kickstarter, at least on the tech side that I do, and this is kind of our first uh, game developer interview for a Kickstarter Unbox, but, uh, you know, they talk about um, the amount of questions um, they have about the product or, or something like that. And, and actually, one guy was saying he actually almost had to hire a person to handle all the inquiries coming in about yeah. the product and the game. I mean, can you comment a little bit about that? <laughs> I, uh, so I'm lucky, again, lucky enough to have, um, I've been, uh, so I have like about 13 years of film and commercial and music video and agency work behind me. So I'm, I know about, that whole chain of like handling making sure like contact with like contact with your audience and making sure like yeah people have questions and providing answers um communication um that's that was half i i really in the last three months haven't done enough development like i literally kind of like i i made sure like three months before like from now um dev kind of stopped i had to kind of like because it was going to take up all my time to have a presence in social media, answer questions about the game, and also being able to tell a story. Um, it's actually one of the things I was talking about in Casual in Casual Connect, the guys who were beside me, and they had a really great game. It was, it was really fun, fun to play. The mechanics were really good. Like the, the, the art style was great, but they didn't, I saw them struggling trying to talk about their game. And it was one of the things of like, I knew I had to nail that first. Um, uh, it was, uh, yeah, and it was, a, it was a talk I was at, at Gamer Camp um, last mm -hmm. summer. Um, I can't remember the developer's name, but he wrote To the Moon and he had a talk about how to make your game. The most important part thing of like being, a game, being an indie game is being remarkable. Um, and I really took that to heart. It was like and remarkable really encapsulating that word that people can talk about your game. So I was like, okay, what are the points about my game that people can talk about it? Like, how would you, like, if someone were somewhere to bring up the game in casual conversation, what would they talk about? And it was like, it's based off a real place. Uh, it's like about hipsters, which is always funny. Um, the kind of like drinking in the park and the can collecting thing, the Asian immigrant story, gentrification. I was like, oh, okay, these, I need to talk about these things and mm. like put that into a message and just kind of like get really used to talking about the game in that way. Um, and that was like the foundation that when people were asking about the game, I could base it off of that. So like when I was at Casual Connect, which was really great, um, because you guys have Dolores Park, <laughs> and, and everybody literally was in was was when I was meeting. They were just like, "Oh, it's like Dolores Park. It's like I've, I've seen that. I know exactly what you're talking about." Like, perfect. Okay, good. Now we can talk about the game, and that was that was really really important to, to for that communication. 
Yeah. So, so yeah, it looks like um, it's interesting when I, when I look back on what you're trying to tell me. So you put a lot of effort into really um, uh, the marketing, the awareness um, and Kickstarter for you, at least, you know, in your, in your, your indie game um, kind of ecosystem was just basically for awareness, which, uh, you know, actually, I see that trend more and more now because on the product side, they use it for test marketing a lot now. Yeah. And it seems like you you, you kind of used it as kind of that, you know, where yeah. they say, you know, am I going to get traction? If I make my goal, does that mean that I have enough people that when I do launch this, this would be relevant? You know, you were kind of talking about that, right? No, and that's, that's, that's actually... The key thing of understanding what crowdfunding is really about, it's about the crowd. It really isn't about the funding. <laughs> like, the funding is, is the second part of it. It's about like how many people are really interested in the idea that you have. And yeah, if you think you're going to like, the outliers are the ones that everybody talks about. Like, you know, the, the Tim Schafer's and, the, and, the, and the, the huge like, oh, who's the guy who made Mega Man? And like all of those big games, like those are the outliers. Those are the ones that like you got, you have like this amazing idea, you hit a zeitgeist that's absolutely right. And there is really nothing that should stop you from making your game. Like mm. that's a, that's a kind of like, and it really is, it's about it. It's like a, it's a big affirmation to like, yeah, the, no, though you got tons of people go, go make, go, 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 go make the thing. So like, you know, about the, the fact that their original Kickstarter uh, failed. They were aiming for 150,000 and they got 100. And then they retooled, it, they retooled eight months after. And that's what they got really big with. And it really is a demonstration of like, you need to have some sort of crowd before as a seed to make that Kickstarter work. Mm. So what they, were Go ahead. Oh, no, 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 sorry. Uh, what were some of the, um, you know, I wanted to ask you, like, was there any surprises along the way on this campaign that, like, uh, either about your game or about the process itself that kind of hit you, you know, thinking yeah. about it? Um, so a couple of the things that, like, that uh, bit, bit stumblings, but also really good learning lessons of, like, um, one thing I did was on the weekends. So, okay, I... I put the Kickstarter at the end of summer because I wanted to have people who are in the park. Um, like basically what was going to happen in the game was actually happening in real life. Like, so it's the summer, everybody's drinking in the park. Um, and that's what the game is about. So I should do the Kickstarter around that time. Um, and I was like, Oh, this would be a great idea. I'll, I'll go with the game with an iPads and stickers and just kind of like have people play in the park. I got really good at walking up to strangers, which was really tough, <laughs> which was really like, I just, I just got used to kind of like, hi guys, how's it going? I'm making a game about Trinity Bellwoods. Here's, you know, and it was, yeah, it's like, and just walking up to people with an iPad and just kind of like let them try out the game. And I, you know, it was really good. It was a really good experience of, of just connecting with people and finding out like, and everybody was like, this is a really good idea. Um, did that translate into a lot of like donators? Not really, but it was just something I thought was really good to do. Mm -hmm. um, it was more, it, it helped me more than it actually helped the campaign, uh, which was really, really, really funny to find out. Um, and the end of summer thing was a real kick in the pants because so one of the things I, and I, and I knew this, I, I really knew this before going in and I really should have listened to my own advice of doing a Kickstarter in the summer is a terrible idea. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> so the reason being is that Kickstarter relies on this thing called the internet. <laughs> in the summer, most people are trying to avoid the internet or are trying to like, they're off to their cottages. They're gone. They, they've gone on their summer vacation and their trip. And, what I would, what I was hoping of just like people kind of like sharing it online and everything and people reading it, I'm like, oh, no one's at their desk right now. And, and I really wanted to get a lot of the kind of like real life, like buildings and businesses involved in the, in the, in the park and area to like become part of the game. And, and they were all on vacation and I'm like, oh, 
crap, I forgot about that. Of course, why would they be on the internet? No one's on the internet. So <laughs> that was really, that was, a, that was, that was an eye opener. Um, anybody who's thinking about doing a Kickstarter, don't do it in August. It's a really bad idea. <laughs> You know, well, I, I think in your case, uh, you had Casual Connect in August, right? So, yeah. you know, you had a you had a couple of ways of reaching out to people that were hardcore game uh, oh, yeah. people, you know. Well, meeting people was like meeting people and having like that face to face contact. Summer was amazing. Like I met I've met so many people, um, so many great developers. I've had like a lot of like commiserie and like exaltation and great, like just good times. Um, yeah, no, definitely for that. Like go out, like hang out. It's the summer. Um, I just did feel it really with that kind of like being in the park and trying to get that live thing going and, and it just didn't translate. And then like the online momentum really wasn't just like, I just couldn't push that, that boulder to kind of get momentum in the summer because like people would be excited, they would post and no one would repost and, or they would be like small reposts. And I'm just like, where is everybody? A couple things of what could have really helped not get to that stressful state was um, part of that six weeks leading up to the Kickstarter. Um, I had uh, like, we we're trying to get, again, I was trying to get like, finding those big donors and like, and, I, and like I wanted to get a businesses involved and like the, the maybe a beer company or something and nothing hit. And it was really about like everybody was gone on vacation and just kind of like finding those big donors just weren't there. And so no. having that, like having that lined up would have been really helpful. Um, would have like reduced that three weeks, three weeks of stress. Um, yeah, it's really all about that pregame. The other thing um, was that, so I got a lot of people who were interested on the on the spot um, about the game and were like, oh, I totally donate to this, but I didn't have a real way to convert them to like have them sign up to Kickstarter. There's, a, there's just enough friction between someone wanting to donate and then having to sign up to the account and then get on Kickstarter and then do it. And so that, like a lot of like you had to kind of do a little bit of nagging to kind of like oh hey remember this thing that you wanted to do and just kind of like yeah just like just you have to kind of keep doing a little bit of a shove to get people off their laurels to kind of like oh yeah yeah no i wanted to do that yeah this is kind of tough right because you're you're is you're a private individual you're not like a non-profit corporation so you can't like just set up the <laughs> donate to me site <laughs> right yeah, i guess you could I, 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 I mean i actually i think i'm i'm going like there was a i got about a dozen people that didn't make it to the actual campaign and they're like oh oh can i do something and i'm like i might actually put up a little like a storefront thing or something just for yeah. that um and that might work but yeah, that wouldn't have helped get me to a Kickstarter goal, which was right. like the tough part, which was really like, okay, I, I kind of have to like focus and make sure everything kind of goes to get that number. Um, and yeah, that got really hairy at the end. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think that goes to your point of what, why you probably would use Kickstarter over another um, crowdfunding uh, platform, but you know, because there's a lot of people on there already and you were absolutely right i think that that friction you mentioned of actually talking to someone that's interested but they're not on kickstarter is that conversion problem that you're had you, you talked about it's, right yeah and i'm like there's i i don't think there's i don't know how you can get around that unless Unless they could kind of like attach the kickstarter really quickly to some other account thing that they have I mean, that's, yeah, there's always going to be just a little friction between like, you can't just dump in your email and kind of go like, okay, funded, like, okay, I'll donate. It's just, there's no kind of like that one button turnaround. Yeah. That would be actually kind of nice if they actually uh, had an email marketing part of Kickstarter actually. Yeah. Um, that would be kind of cool. So any, any other uh, 
you know, pearls of wisdom that you want to give an indie game uh, developer? That yeah. That um, so I actually during the campaign, um, I had to do kind of two personal boosts in there just to get past certain numbers. Um, and that was like, I knew I was going to have to do this. Like, uh, again, uh, if you're doing a Kickstarter, make sure you have like a bit of money put away just to kind of like push it in to kind of get some momentum. And you, you have to do that. Like it's, it's just going to happen. Um, so it was kind of like, so like a Kickstarter usually does this thing, right? It's like a U. Um, and you start off right at the beginning and you should have like a big chunk of your, like you you spent all this time before and then you start and you get a whole bunch of, like you get your first bump. Um, and so I got my like 30% actually got to like 40% actually, like right at the beginning. And then you get nothing <laughs> and it's like three weeks and then it all happens at the end. Uh, wow. Yeah. And so that middle three weeks was just like, <laughs> just like queasiness really stressful i've seen friends stress out about that time and i'm like okay just be okay and like help them calm down and then when i'm actually in it and when it was, it was actually my project man it's the most stressful thing like i i actually talked to one of the guys that i, w I just recently came back from xoxo um and a lot of game developers there and we we're talking about our kickstarters and everybody was like oh that three weeks three weeks in the middle when just nobody is no, like one of the guys I met actually lost money in the middle of that three weeks. Like somebody, some of the backers just like backed out because it was really cool. Like his project, like first week fully 100% funded and they had even a worse problem of finding momentum after that. Like people like, and then they had, like there was a dip when somebody like, some people just were like, oh, you guys are fine. And they, <laughs> they, they reversed their backing. So like one day he lost money and he was just like, it, that was like, that's like a gut punch. It's really tough. So just being prepared for that kind of like, you just have to have a strong back, a, like persistence and a goodwill to just kind of like get through all of that. So getting through all of that, and that was like really talking to friends, talking to other people and producers that just having like, having those people around just to go like, no dude, it's cool. <laughs> like, no, dude, it's cool. You don't, don't, don't jump off the ledge. Yeah, I'm just like, I'm just. I, maybe I should just cancel this thing. Maybe uh, I'll. Uh, what can, how can I save? I don't know. Maybe I don't know. What, like, going through that, yeah, you'll go through that. You just end up going through it. You just have to. Um, you know, talking before, like, so preparing for all of that, I had some money to kind of like uh, about after like kind of like the first like i had about a week left and i i just wasn't i just needed a little bit to pass the halfway mark and so like i put in some money to just kind of just get past that halfway mark you get a little like email update goes to your entire crowd that got a little bit of momentum moving up and right at the end so this is this was the thing like 24 hours i had left so okay, so at the forty-eight hour mark, yeah, I was yeah. I was at sixty percent. Like I had yeah, another five right, right. to go. That was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I remember that really okay. crazy. Just like, and then so there was that first forty-eight hour push. I just like that was like every single email, like Twitter. I just slammed. I like did a bunch of graphics and just put it out to everybody I had left, and because. And so there's that thing about, I was talking about friction, right? Like I got all these people during those three weeks that I was meeting and they were like, oh yeah, totally. Oh yeah, totally. But they weren't going to do it right away because it takes a little friction. That 48 hour mark was enough pressure to kind of like dig all those people out of the ground and pull them out. But the, the traction was there and I know the audience was there. Um, I got really lucky with a lot of press. I, I mean, you guys like came out, which was really amazing. Um, but I mean, I had I was on like uh, local CBC radio um, in the like on a Tuesday mor on a Thursday morning. I had like a bunch of like blog posts during the summer about like because it was about the park. Um, a lot of the indie game people were just like, "Oh, it's about a real place." So I had all the press and like everything. Like I got really lucky on that stuff, um, which was really helpful and. Yeah.
uh, so everything was like, it was really the summer part that really, yeah, that really, yeah. Me. yeah. Yeah, no, totally. So, uh, you know, let's uh, close off the interview. Uh, you, you know, you have some game development to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Think, oh, so the client. Uh. <laughs> but, uh, you know, tell us you know, quickly about uh, the game and when it's going to be released and now that you got funded and, you yeah. know, all that good stuff. So um, I'm looking at my schedule of, like, how I want to get it done in 12 months. I want to make sure, like, the, like, there will be a game at the end of next summer. Um, and I think I'm going to have uh, a kind of a working alpha, maybe beta by the beginning of summer and just have the, like all the backers being able to play it, have some like QA time during the summer um, just so that that can roll on. Um, I've got, so I have to, I have all the design. So like I'm a one man army, which is maybe sometime in the next couple of months i'll find a like I, I would love to find a partner of some sort to just kind of like help with the game um but right now i mean it's just like it's as funding and also as like a first time developer um i really feel like i should just kind of hunker down and just do this thing mm -hmm. um yeah I'll, I'll take i'll take help wherever i can get it but uh yeah i have about eight months of half of that's going to be design half of that's going to be development um and so that's like putting the rest of the feature sets in there. Uh, and then the other half is just like um, doing all the, the design, all the character designs, which is I think about 250 people-ish wow. or so. Yeah. 200, like I got about, I just got a little over 200 backers and some of those are group, like group deals. So about 250 characters that I'll be designing and putting in there, um, building up that pipeline and then modeling up like the park. That's four months at least. So yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. sure. So it's going to be, yeah, wall to wall. Of this is what I'm doing. Um, yeah. Well, let's see. Uh, I, I do you? Do, I mean, do you want to create a game company long term? Or what, what's kind of some of the, your 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 future goals with some of this, or is it just kind of like you just want to stay an indie game developer and just kind of I want to know, see I mean, how it goes? It is exploring about like it is. It is one of those. It's like it's a dream that I've always wanted to do. Um, and I've been working again. So I've been working in film and television and commercial stuff for 13 years, been a VFX, like although mostly VFX supervising. Um, I realized that I didn't really have a film in me, which was like a hard realization of just like, I want to make something for myself. I don't think it's going to be a film. And then I kind of discovered like indie game development, and like I've been playing games my entire life. I kind of know what I want to make. Um, and so it's going to be like, this is the first kind of like exploration of just like, okay, what am I thinking about? What kind of game do I want to make? Mm. Um, and then, then after this game, like, do I want to make more real life games? Um, do I want to like more stuff on more commentary, like conceptual? Um, and it is really like, it's just like, okay, this is my first step into what I'm hoping to be as a long-term career of, as a game creator. And, um, yeah, as, and as, as just like, as a, a creative creator. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, you could talk about a lot of these things. I mean, I think there's a lot of urban, urban challenges, you know, that oh, yeah. you could talk about. I mean, um, you know, High rise development is one of them. Oh, Homelessness yeah. is another. Yeah. You know. Oh, geez. Actually, like, yeah, that was that was a really that was a really interesting thing of like San Francisco and Portland, and knowing that it's because of the temperate climate and the yeah the 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 homeless population is like and it's tough because I I kind of been there like long time ago when I was a teenager, like friends and like some early tough times, I'm kind of like, oh yeah, I know what's that about. And it's just like, oh, it's really, it's really prevalent and I found on the West Coast. I'm assuming that's because we don't, you guys don't have that brutal winter that will kill you. Um, but even then, that's, there's some something to explore in there. I think there's a lot of, I think there's this thing that games do really well. And mm -hmm. it's that like, I can present an idea and a space um, and kind of put all those concept, concepts together and you can explore that. Like here, like I just put you here, like here's some rules on how this world works. 
explore and then discover. And it's like, you have to learn in a game to make it work. Mm, right. And that process of learning is like how you can, that's how you put your message in there yeah. or like your story. Um, so another thing, like I had a lot of friends going like, oh, you should make this into a documentary. And I'm like, you know, this would be a really boring documentary actually. <laughs> like can collectors, like, I don't know if I can make this super interesting because it really is about the nuances. It's about the tiny, mm -hmm. like about actually getting into the shoes of, mm -hmm. of the, of the can collectors. Um, well, you know, I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I, saw, I, th I think the game is, uh, you know, games are kind of like, um, you know what I'm thinking of, like, you know, it's kind of like Game of Thrones almost, right? Yeah. right? I mean, you can't really, you know, a movie has a beginning, middle, and end, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, like, yeah. and there's like, and it's like, it's because uh, in, in a movie or a documentary, you have the axis of time. You, you have to follow one thing to the next, and it's, and it's linear. You have to go through that. And, and like, that's an art in itself. And I, I, I love film. Um, but, because you have to kind of take those ideas and put them in order and make them logically progress. And that's the, that's the thing, whatever else gets put on the ed, like cutting room floor, like a lot of like those ideas, you have to kind of like you're streamlining for film. Like what is that Scorsese thing about editing? It's like the art of subtraction, right? Like just break it down to like as, as just enough to make the story happen. But in a game you can kind of just go like, it's like, it's like a maximal. It's like, Here's like the main part. This is what you need to do. There's like that impetus in there, but you can just keep putting stuff around it and even more and more. And it's more like unfolding. You can put all those ideas in there. Um, and if done right, I think like everything becomes interesting. Right. You can put all those, you don't have to edit. Like it's more of the, it's like a, it's like an art of addition. Which I, <laughs> interesting. Okay, we just coined a phrase, I think, Chris. Uh, Chris now really? coined a phrase: the art of addition. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, this is my first game too. I, I'm, I'm all, I'm, I'm talking of like what I'm thinking and just it's, like. No, this is, this is good. This is good, dude. I, I yeah, appreciate it, I, but uh, I'm getting but, that feeling. Yeah. 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 No, thank you. I appreciate your time here. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, you shared a lot of interesting, I would call, um, tidbits on you know, how a game developer would approach it. I, I mean, there's a lot of things you actually surprised me with actually. So I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Your time here. So um, anyway, uh, you know, so uh, can, there's no way for people to actually uh, get your game right now. now that you're off Kickstarter, right? There's no, there's no physical store there, or anything like that. right? Um, I still have the unity, um, the, the unity web version is still on the website. The website's the wizards of Trinity Bellwoods dot com okay and, um yeah there's a demo section the you unfortunately chrome has broken the the plugin for the unity web like uh web plugin so you'll need like safari or firefox to actually or explore oh, okay okay yeah, to, to, yeah. Actually, to actually play it uh but yeah there's like the demo that i've been demoing out i i usually keep a live build up there i'll probably oh. keep doing that um Eventually, I'll. I'm still exploring like some way to kind of have a demo working in there that actually works with every browser, which would be great. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'll be updating that as regularly as possible. Um, and then the fun and the backers will be getting like I'll I'll probably be getting them early earlier betas that they can try out and everything. And, and it's built for mobile, so it's eventually it'll be on iOS and, and Android. Cool. Um, so and under Unity uh, as a platform. So yeah, that's uh, that's the plan. That's great. So uh, how can uh, how can listeners uh, get a hold of you and you know oh, ask um, you more questions about this? Yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, you can find me at the website and also on Twitter and my Instagram. Um, that's at Mr. Christy Castro. That's M R C H R I S D E C A S T R O. You can put that on screen or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you can follow, follow me there. Uh, find me on the website. You can sign up at uh, the Wizards of Trinity Bellwoods. Um, .com. <laughs> and, All right, man. Yeah. 
Well, thanks for your time again. So um, anyway, that was Chris DeCastro, an indie game developer of the Wizards of Trinity Bellwoods, which is a real place in Toronto, which was funded uh, on Kickstarter recently and expected to come out in the summer or the, the end of summer of 2016, he says. So thanks for joining us, everyone. Uh, this is Greg Vore, AK Social Greg on Twitter for the Nerd Stalker Media Network, where we believe in tech, startups, design, and you. Uh, thanks for joining us, everyone, and be careful out there. Hey, thanks again, Chris. Appreciate it.